The Woman Who Wrote Dumbo by Jody Levitan Fade In Interior Basement Day Avery Hud, 58, medium build, runs on the treadmill. She turns up the speed until she's running fast and breathing hard. She huffs and puffs and finally runs out of steam. She stops the treadmill and struggles to catch her breath. Interior Bathroom Day Avery gets on the scale. Damn it. Interior kitchen day. Avery, showered and sparkling, enters the room. Her twin sons, Jamie and Jake, 22, eat lunch. Her husband, Caleb, 55, takes the milk out of the fridge. Finally done? You were down there for hours. Why should today be any different? Quiet, you. What's on the agenda for today? I have that writing seminar at the library. And then I'm going to the supermarket. Big day, huh, Mom? I'm putting the both of you up for adoption. Interior Library Day Avery sits at a long conference table. Other writers surround her. At the front, Gail Storm, 40, speaks. Follow the map of structure. That will make your screenplay that much easier to write. And you have to clock in at under two hours. Tell your story in about 105 pages. Any more than that, then the reader puts it on the pile. Avery raises her hand. Yes, What about The Hateful Eight? That was way over two hours. When you're Quentin Tarantino, you can do what you want. Right now, just starting out, you have to follow the rules. And make sure you protect yourself. Get your stories copyrighted. Ever hear of Helen Aberson Meyer? No one? She was a writer from right here in Schenectady. She should be a household name, but she wasn't properly protected. What did she write? Dumbo. Disney Dumbo? That's the one. Not only that, she pulled Disney out of bankruptcy and put them on the map. Dumbo saved Disney. Why have I never heard of her? Copyright. It's the key to everything. Interior library later. The writers stand and chat. Gail and Avery speak. How long have you been writing? Since my kids were little. I was home with them and needed a creative outlet. Anything produced yet? No, but I've gotten close a couple of times. Hang in there. Your time will come. Another writer steals Gail away. Interior diner, night. Avery sits in a booth with her family. All but Avery read the menu. Gonna look at the menu, Ave? Why? She always gets the same thing. How'd the interview go, Dick? And he didn't hire me on the spot, if that's what you're asking. You can still go to grad school. I'll leave that to Jamie. It's interesting. He would like it. No thanks. College was enough for me. Any ideas from the conference? The waitress takes the order. What's everybody having? I'm going for the chicken parm. Boys? Burger for me. Me too. I'll have the... Caesar salad with the dressing on the side. What he said. Any protein? No. Thanks. The waitress collects the menus and goes. So, the conference. Nothing I haven't heard before. Why do you keep going to those things? They're interesting, Caleb. It keeps me in the loop. Writing a new script, Mom? I heard something interesting. Uh, there was a writer who wrote Dumbo, saved Disney Studios from bankruptcy, and didn't get any credit. That's scary. Why? Not exactly sure. I'm going to Google her, do a little research, find out what happened. Could be my next story. How about we clean out the garage before you start another script? I can write and clean out the garage. No, you can't. You start writing and sit at your desk all day and then go to the gym or run on the treadmill. You don't make time for anything else. That's not true. It kind of is, Mom. Of course it is. You spend hours working out and then write, or fall asleep at your desk because you're so exhausted. No, I don't. The waitress and busboy come over with their meals. Chicken parm for you. Thanks. Burgers. Thanks. Thanks. And your salad with dressing on the side. The waitress and busboy leave. The boys grab the ketchup. Caleb digs in. Avery looks at her plate. She separates the salad into four equal parts. She dips her fork in the dressing and eats the salad, one leaf at a time. Jamie, you can take my leftovers to school with you tomorrow. You can eat the whole thing, you know. I'm good. I'm 
not really hungry. Interior bathroom evening. Avery is in the bathroom in her pajamas. She steps on and off the scale. God damn it. Interior basement morning. Avery runs at breakneck speed on the treadmill. She struggles to breathe. Exterior carnival night. Avery and Caleb stroll the carnival games and hold hands. Why do we come to this thing every year? The kids are grown. They ride the lame roller coaster and it's a town fundraiser. Don't you want to support the community? When you put it that way. The boys catch up to them. That roller coaster blows. Let's take a trip to Hershey Park. The rides rock. Over the summer, we'll go. They walk past the fun house. There are distorting mirrors in front. Hey, look at me. He stands in front of one of the mirrors and has the longest torso in creation. Jake stands in front of another and has a gargantuan chin. Oh, man. The boys really laugh hard. Avery stands in front of the mirrors. She stares silently at her reflection. It looks extremely overweight. All she can see is the stout roundness of her body. She can't look away. Interior gym, morning. Avery grunts as she does squats with weights. Interior home office, day. Avery sits at her desk and Googles, Helen Aberson Meyer. Interior Temple, 1938, evening. Helen Aberson, 30, and full of vigor, is the blushing bride. She stands with Harold Pearl, 23, the smiling groom, under the chupa. Harold lifts his foot and smashes the glass wrapped in a handkerchief. Cheers of muzzle tov from the crowd. Helen and Harold kiss and embrace. Interior Social Hall, evening. The wedding reception is in full bloom. The crowd dances the hora. Helen and Harold are lifted in chairs in the center. Later, Helen and Harold sit at the dais table. Helen's parents, Anna and Morris Aberson, come up to them. They both speak with heavy Russian accents. 